Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another upload. Starting to do more videos as the transfer window continues to heat up. Let me know if you guys like this as well. I'm starting, I'm starting to get used to doing videos and streams on the same day. So if you guys want me to continue with this, let me know in the comment section. We're going to be discussing N'Golo Kante today because we never really spoke about this on the stream. Uh, we were doing the whole tier list and everything and then we got into the Ugarte situation on there. So if you want to see a lot more on that, check out the stream. But we'll mainly talk about N'Golo Kante, touch on Hudson-Odoi and Loftus-Cheek for a little bit to round out all the latest news on Chelsea so far today. So you guys already know what to do. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out the bell, the notification button. Press the bell notification button. That's the one. Moving so slow today. But hit the bell notification button if you want to be the first to know whenever we upload any videos or any content. Check out our other channels. I'm on Sarcasm City a lot. I'm also on Chelsea Fan TV. So check out both of those channels. The links will be down in the description as well. And yeah, let's talk about this N'Golo Kante situation because... It felt like it was already um, sorted that Kante was going to stay at Chelsea. I felt like with his performances after he came back from his injury in August, the way he was playing, it looked a lot like we were going to re-sign him. It felt like the whole mood from the board was that we were going to judge N'Golo Kante based on his form after surgery. And he came in and he was basically one of our best players. Looked like our best forward and he's not even a forward. Which I guess isn't that much of a flex because our attack is a load of arse as we already know and we've said so many times throughout this season. But it says more about N'Golo Kante that he can come into this mess and instantly look like our best player. And galvanise us a little bit. He was making chances. Um, there was opportunities for him to score like against Real Madrid and against Brentford. And I know N'Golo Kante isn't really the sort of player that you want to see on the end of chances. But that's the sort of player that he is. He is literally everywhere when he's at his peak. And the opposition just can't handle him. The only problem is they can handle everybody else on our team. And that's why we still continue to lose games even with Kante in the side. But he got an injury. The last two to three games before the end of the season. I think the last game he had was, um, I think, Bournemouth. I think it was the Bournemouth game. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments section. But with that in mind, Kante's contract talks have stalled as a result. Fabrizio reported on this earlier today saying, Kante's contract extension is not done yet. Talks are very advanced in the last months, but now the situation is unclear again. More contacts will take place. Parties will talk in order to decide. And there are more clubs keen on Kante on a free, including in Saudi Arabia. Now, we know Kante is a very marketable player, so I'm not surprised that Saudi Arabia have interest in him as well. It's kind of surprised me, though, that the injury has stalled the negotiations. And it makes me wonder what the terms were going to be before that. Were we going to sign Kante on an incentivized, like, appearance-based contract? Or were we just going to give him a base weekly wage or just keep him on the same sort of contract that he was on before? Because something would have had to have gone backwards as a result since then. I feel like Kante has been back to his best since the injury. You guys know I was very iffy on re-signing N'Golo until he came back. Because the guy just doesn't have any availability. And he looked like he was on a decline to me last season. I personally thought he was on the decline for the last three years and he just had a very good three-month patch on the run to winning the Champions League. Obviously, balled out with his four-man of the match performances, but I felt in the league he wasn't really as good as he was compared to in Europe. But he's come back from injuries, looked like a much better player. I thought we need some veterans in the midfield as well. Kovacic is likely to leave. Jorginho's already left. It's all just young players. Like, Loftus-Cheek looks to be leaving too. So, it looks like we need to keep Kante so we have at least some sort of experience in that midfield. But I understand why Bowley and the rest of the board are probably a bit iffy on giving him a base wage. I've always said if we're re-signing N'Golo Kante, you re-sign him on an appearance-based contract because you can't have somebody on that sort of wages who can't stay fit. And in spite of the good performances from Kante, he was injured again after seven games. And we actually, like, 
utilised him correctly. We didn't throw him straight back into starting lineups, game in and game out with zero rest. Like, we brought him back for one game and then we rested. We brought him back for Liverpool and then we rested him for the Wolves game. Then we brought him for the, back for the Madrid game, but I think we subbed him off. Then he didn't play the Brighton game. Then he played the Real Madrid home game. And then I think he was benched for the next match after that. No, the Brentford game. I think there was a week break in between that. So he played that one again. Like, he's had breaks in between these these games and he's still got injured. I understand why Chelsea are being a bit iffy with this, but I would still like to see us re-sign him. Like, a lot of us want to see Kante stay. I think a lot of us want to keep him at any price, which I don't agree with. There has to be a cut-off point. And I'm interested to see where both sides are at with this story. But... We can't rely on Kante consistently, and someone who we can't rely on consistently can't be our highest earner. The reason why Kante was on 290k a week or 260k a week or whatever we had him on was because he played every single match. Like, I don't think people remember how many games he played under Conte, under Sari, even under Lampard when he was getting injured. Like, he played basically every match, played a full 90 covered the most distance per game and was still one of our best players but he wasn't managed correctly by either of those managers and it's led to the situation that we have right now with Angolo where we can't keep him fit and he wants a lot more money than what we should realistically be giving him but his ability level kind of deserves that amount so it's a very sticky situation I want us to keep Kante because I don't think we should be relying on him week in week out but we do play one game a week for this season also I think if you manage his minutes well enough and you build a midfield that doesn't have to rely on N'Golo you have unbelievable depth in midfield and that can't be ignored that really can't be ignored. So to me, if we can get N'Golo Kante, try and resolve this situation because I don't want to see him in a rival shirt. I know Arsenal were linked with him because he wants to stay in London. Don't. I've seen Jorginho in, a, in an Arsenal shirt is enough damage for me without having to see Kante there too. I am good. I don't need to see that we don't have a choice. What am I even talking about? Like, he, if he wants to stay in London, he's got a month to re-sign or we're fucked anyway. Re-sign the guy. Not on any wage, but try and sort out something that's a bit favourable towards N'Golo Kante. Like, maybe throw in a couple bonuses there if you need to, but it has to be appearance-based. And I think Bowley recognises that. I think the board recognises that as well. So we have to see how this, this story develops. We already know what the midfield situation is other than that. Though Kovacic is likely to leave because he's got one year left. Man City are looking at him. I think Bayern are looking at him as well. Mount, we already know the situation. Arsenal, Liverpool, United, Bayern, all interested. Ruben looks close to agreeing terms of AC Milan. Which is a very, very big development because... Ruben has massive wages, 150k a week. It's the only reason why I don't think we should be keeping him as depth. Other than that, I think he's a very serviceable squad player. But if he's willing to lower those wages to go to AC Milan, then we might be able to finally see a move for Ruben on the cards. I, li I like him. I think he's a good squad player. I think you need that sort of attitude. You need, you need a couple of veterans in the dressing room. But the wages are too much. And we do need to have some outgoings before the end of the season. So if Ruben has to be the guy that we sacrifice, it is what it is on that front. Hudson Odoi apparently is going to have talks with Pochettino in pre-season. Palace and Forrest are interested. I don't think we sell him. Unless we sell him for like 5 million or something. Because I was speaking to Alex on, on, about this on my stream earlier. And he said like massive wages don't make too much of a difference if you lower the transfer fees. So... If we, look, if we send him on a very, very cheap transfer fee, maybe we could get rid of him. But I don't see how Hudson-Odoi breaks into the team either. If we end up keeping him, he is just going to be a bench warmer, respectfully. But he didn't have a good loan spell at Leverkusen. I don't think he even had a goal or an assist in the competition. And the Bundesliga is an easy, easy competition for attackers. There is so much space to deal with. So it's not a good look if you're struggling in that competition. Whoever wants him, take him, be it a one-year loan and then he's gone at the end of the season or whatever. I don't know. It depends on Hudson-Odoi, but I don't see any pathway 
for him into the squad. There's not even any pathway for Pulisic and there's barely any for Ziyech before we even look towards Cho. So, thanks to the 2019 run, it's a shame about the injury and everything, but it is what it is and it's done. But this video is also done. So big up everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another stream. Take care and up the chels.